It's like when I was at Eva's the other day and her daughter's pulled out all their tools. Yeah. They're my little ponies. These are, these yeah. are Eva's toys. <laughs> Scott Brown here. We are going on a little trip. A little trip to somewhere very familiar. We're heading back to Auckland for a few days, see family, things like that, and do a little bit of work. I've got to keep the videos coming out after all. Eva's our Uber driver. <laughs> Trying. <laughs> This is what happens when you're friends with Eva and you need a suitcase. And it's my one. Thank you so much. This is my first time in this airport. And that's because we drove down from Auckland when we moved. And it took us 14 hours. So this flight I think is like an hour and a half. A lot easier. Have you already put your bag in? Yeah. Nice. Since we moved down here, Eva's been so nice to us. She just dropped us off at the airport and she's helped us in so many other ways as well. She's very grateful. Let's go get some coffee. So Jess just pointed out that it has been one year since we've been on a plane and that flight was flying from Auckland to the South Island just for like a holiday. Thank you. Now oddly enough the South Island is home and we're flying back to Auckland. Well I'm gonna go get a cheese scone. I couldn't do it because I was walking all around the airport trying to find you. I had a funny thing happen. I must have looked very confused and this guy goes oh you went that way. I was like sorry? And I'm just going to stand in for a while. He goes, oh, Scotty Brown? And I was like, oh. <laughs> Someone who watches the video. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, thank you. Thing and beauty. Welcome to another delicious episode of Scott Brown Carpentry. <laughs> <laughs> so here I am at Rich's place and we are planning to do the laundry. We're going to change the bench top and build a shelf and we'll look at it in a sec. Oh, there we go. Voila! Breakfast time. Pardo's out of town at the moment but there is a chance that he might stop by. Hopefully. We'll see. What are we looking at? This is uh, this is classic HR Holden, 1967. Oh my god. 186. What does that mean? Really, that's the size of the motor. So back before we left Auckland, you might have remembered I was here doing the steps out the back at Richard's house, and the garage was almost done. I think the cladding wasn't on and the door wasn't on, but now it's all done. <laughs> here we go. Oh my god. Here it is. It's not a show car, but this is a classic, reliable. Uh, Holden red engine, yeah. the English uh, SU carburetors. So we're going to pull out of the garage, but um, something that I didn't actually know that until very recently is that old cars, if you just start them and move them and shut them off, it's not good for them. So uh, we're going to take it for a spin. See, a bit of this goes on. This is standard. Once it's once it's been started, then it's here it comes. Here it comes. Hey. Probably do some carpentry. Eh? Mm -hmm. 
So new bench top and cabinet. What's the cabinet going to look Jim, like? Well, here's the plan, so you can see exactly what it looks like. See, perfect. Oh man, makes total sense. So three bays, two shelves, plywood all the way along. And new sink as well, right? New sink, yeah. New sink, new tap, new splashback, tile splashback, and we need to try and go and find some uh, the LED strip from underneath to make it look fancy. As you can see here, this is the bench. So it's going to have three layers of ply. The middle one's going to be a shelf and so will the bottom. And then vertical ply there. So we're going to build these individual boxes and join them up. How do you feel about a 300mm deep shelf? A what? 300mm deep shelf? Yeah, from the wall. You'd think I'd be able to like really instantly picture that. The reason I ask is... That's what works. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. So we're going to have like little... Is there not, um, did I not put dimensions on my plans? I mean, that's to scale. If you... We need 16 bits, at yeah. least a metre. And you can get that out of two sheets. Yeah. If they're 300. Yeah, 300 is sweet. I'm going to put this laser over here. And the reason I'm doing that is we want to check the level of the ceiling and the level of the bench. Well, 65. 1264.3 so that's pretty good. Rich here has got 300mm tiles so we're going to space them so we don't have to cut the tiles you know height wise and we're going to make the cabinet fit just above the tiles and snug them to the ceiling right? Cut that moulding and go right up. Oh nah. Or do you want to come down like 50mm or something? We, no. we, we didn't discuss that again. <laughs> again uh, I mean, the drawings didn't really. Yeah, they didn't really display the uh, exact detail, did they? It's a concept. There's a concept drawing. So I've been trying to work out. We we realised that we didn't have enough for the backs of the cabinets. So in order to get a couple built today. We're going to cut a couple of the backs and I've just mapped out exactly what we need. So that is one sheet drawn to scale and it'll get two backs, three or four shelves and a bit of waste. And then over here we get another five shelves, one, two, three, four, five, six verticals. And if you look at this, that's enough. That does all the verticals. We'll be one short of shelves, one short of the end piece and one back short. So we need all of that from a third sheet that we don't have. That's my fault. <laughs> this reminds me of uh, like a problem I did at, at mass, in mass once and they're like, you know, like you've got a warehouse and it's this big and you've got these yeah, boxes. Yeah. How many of these boxes can you fit <laughs> in and which way is the best way to put them in? Exactly, yeah. That's you, Scott. You're like the math guy. So we do have three sheets there, but one of them is the bench top, which we're just going to split down the middle. This is exactly the same as my circular saw, kind of. One key difference, the base, look at that, it's just like a track saw. It's made to go onto the tracks, so you can use your circular saw on a track. I'll put Ag Gifted because it was given to Rich, it wasn't given to me, it was given to Rich. So I've used this a couple of times, but just doing sort of more rough cuts on a building site, and I'm not sure how well it performs getting down to more fine laminate kind of ply yeah and, and mm -hmm. just like cabinet making sort of precision so we thought we'd uh do a little test yeah because obviously obviously we've got the festal here which is like the the bee's knees um track saw and that gives a nice clean cut so can this hold up can this keep up with the festal? this is like a, almost this is pretty much a brand new blade it's done like three cuts so i thought we'd better chuck in a new blade oh, keep it fair yeah keep it fair yeah keep it even yeah or MDF Yes, yeah, so this is nice ply. It's very um, stable and dense. That's why you get that nice smooth ripple free surface. Rich bought this from Plytech. We pulled up to Plytech yesterday. Caught up with our old mate Harmon. Thanks Harmon. Right. Thank you. <laughs> and um, picked up some of the ply. That's the same company that I 
used to buy plywood off for my plywood feature walls and floating shelf and all that kind of stuff. Highly recommend if you're in the market for plywood in New Zealand. Hey Rosie, hey Rosie, hey Rosie. Hey, hey. Test number one. Makita 40 volt with a tractor bass. It definitely picks up a bit. Yeah, it's a little bit of a, yeah. You can feel it sticking up. Yeah, it's definitely little, little chips. Oh man, they picked up more. This is a Makita Edge. And this is the Festo Edge. For some reason, for some reason it's worse, but that's not very typical of the Festo track saw. Yeah, that's unusual. Like when I've used the Festo, it's been much better. I just don't know why. And that's a brand new blade. Yeah, and the blade's in the right direction, right? There's the arrow and there's the arrow. I wonder if it's possible that the Makita has cut the, the, the yeah, back a little bit. Uh, there is a small gap. Is there? Between the blade and the guard, but Ever so what, if small. I, what if I tighten those up? Does that close up that gap? Yeah, it does. You need maybe more on the back. It's kind of tight at the front, not at the back. Well, not really, yeah. Yeah, not really. If you've ever had problems with the Festival Track Saw, please let me know in the comments below what you've done about it. Troubleshooting, what you can do. Um, one thing to consider though, if you're going to use two different saws on the same tracks, is that they have different places on the guard. So I think the Makita has been cutting the guard away from where the Festool usually sits. But you can adjust the Festool, and we managed to get it a bit closer, but we're still having this problem with the tear up. Now when you have a problem with the Festool tool, there's only one person to call. Hey buddy! How have you been Cameron? Ah. <laughs> Good bro. Good. Long time no see. Long time no see. Long time bro. I called up the thing and they're like, oh no we don't we don't have any. Oh, this guy's got everything. Eh? <laughs> You're the oh, man. Cause that's the main problem with the tracks is they wear out yeah right yeah uh, so it's best to kind of keep these yeah so i keep yeah, like nice, three man. or four of them bro the festival should pay you a commission cameron uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh you're talking about plugs scotty got me into this eh? <laughs> oh there we go <laughs> welcome to the club <laughs> jeepers creepers cameron because i got quite a few of 40 volt tools now so oh yeah oh that's the little one that detaches eh oh uh, no no oh, so this is the one. one that is just a 165 and then this is the one that detaches. 125 this is the one that detaches so, you know how you got the 18 volt one right yeah but check out the speed on this oh wow what the one thing when when Pido first got given the, uh, the 40 volt kit yeah. yeah it was the skill saw where i was like whoa this skill saw is nice like it was the one tool where i was like oh man this you can see the difference yeah there's a few stuff that I got from Japan, eh? Like direct. <laughs> yeah, because that's what um, Tools and Stuff does, eh? Mm. That's oh, bro, right. I, I met care. up with them, eh? What have you been up to, Cameron? Uh, we finished a big commercial. Do you remember the big commercial? Yeah, the big factory, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's all done. Uh, and then now I'm doing six townhouses, which is a little bit cruisy for me. So that's why I got like time at the moment. Oh, like compared to the commercial one? Bro. Uh, easy. Have you guys figured out the materials side of things? Uh, materials, I'm bringing a lot of them from um, China. Yeah. But sourcing good stuff from there. So you're, you're able to get plasterboard from there? and yeah, Plasterboard, I even got balustrade glass. I have an uh, engineer that signs it off here. But you, do you have a battery for this? Nah. Oh, I'll give you the whole uh, shablang. Does it chew through the batteries? Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, your alignment's out. See how Fuck, that's what it is. See how you were like yeah, really no, close no, there. I can see yours is perfect the whole way along. And then you got a little bit of a yeah big gap here. Just now, oh, look at 
I told you, man. Got Cameron's the man in the, the house. Man, yeah. yeah. He's the pistol man. He knows stuff. I think it's one of these screws. Uh, the, and then you have to... So what I usually do is get a ruler, bro. Yeah. And then I put the ruler here. And then I tighten it. And then I screw it back in, right? I think yeah. it's these two here. Yeah. Yeah, it, make, it kind of makes sense it would be those ones. Wait, why is one of your one missing? Oh. Yeah, that's not helping either, probably. Yeah, one of your ones missing, bro. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's probably why this one came out a little bit, bro. Sweet. Oh, well, bro. Uh, if I ever make it down to Nelson, I'll give you a call. Yeah, of course. Because yeah, um, Gaston's oh. trying to get me to go down, eh? Yeah, yeah, videos, I videos. Like, you need to come down. You need to buy a house here. I cannot buy a house in Nelson. If there's three of us together, we won't get anything done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah good to see Cameron. It's one of those days where the setup is uh, taking a bit longer than we expected. So we did the Makita first. Yeah. And it was not bad. It's not bad. Right? Like it wasn't fine finished cabinet making material, but it was if you were making like cabinets for a garage or something like that. And then we did the Festool. That's not how it That's should That's not be. how a Festool tracks are usually cut. <laughs> so then we realised that I've cut the lip off the Festool track a little bit short with my Makita, which took the alignment out for my festival. Yeah, Cameron happened to be popping in to say hi because he knew I was in Auckland. And um, Captain Festival. Captain Festival also had a spare track saw. This one here, the cordless one that I've used in videos a couple of years ago. And he also lent us his track that has the that has the splinter guard on it, matching the blade. So now, hopefully, you're going to see how a festival track saw should cut. Oh yeah. Now we're talking. That's what it's supposed to look like. Yeah, that's mint. Yeah, mine does not look like that. Yeah, that's what we want. All right. Looks like we're using Cameron's saw from now on. This edge here, obviously, that's the that's the proper festal cut. Yep. And this is the, the Makita. Yeah, and this top edge here is the Makita skill saw cut. Right. So yeah, I mean, I wouldn't use that for what we're doing, but I mean, I would use it for this when you did the garage. Yeah, absolutely. Well, like when I was doing my, my I'm a little embarrassed to uh, show you the state of my garage, but um, yeah, I'd use it when I was making like these cabinets. Yeah. Totally. This bench top, any of that sort of stuff, I'd use it for that. I don't actually know the price, but that saw is probably around Six, seven, eight hundred bucks, and the track saw is more like a thousand or eleven. Yeah, it's twelve hundred maybe. Yeah, yeah, so like a bit and, cheaper. And you've got, and you've also then got a skill saw as well. So you're kind of getting two two tools in one. So it's kind of a, you know, for most most builders, right? Yeah, for most builders. I think it makes your old um, every builder should have a track saw video almost obsolete. I put a tear. I'll edit a tear coming down here. <laughs> It can't be relevant forever. So yeah, this could be a great builder's track saw. Probably gonna end this exciting episode here and continue with the cabinets in the next exciting episode. And Pido might be in it. It's not bad. Not bad at all. Pido. Alright man, I haven't driven a manual in so long, this is gonna be very embarrassing. You're definitely gonna still you need to give it a bit of a bit of, a bit of anger with that right foot. Go and get a feel for it. Yeah, that is something. Hmm. What's your, oh, the handbrake's still on. You've got this, mate. First gear. No one's watching. Keep. <laughs> Gonna have to get a bit more aggressive with that right foot, Scott. Yeah, it is, it's like there's a bit of resistance there. Eh? Is that fair? You're the only resistance. Put your foot down. <laughs> I can see why you like this, it's very fun to drive. I love this bus driver steering wheel. It's great. <laughs>